Hey guys, this is Agent Lozen, and today I'm bringing you the winning tips and tricks for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, a Nintendo Entertainment System. If you want to raise your high score, beat your friends, or take your game to the next level, then you've come to the right place. After suffering defeat at the hands of the Turtles, Shredder is back for another round. He's trained a new army of Foot Clan ninjas and hired intergalactic bounty hunters for his Teenage Mutant rematch. With weapons in hand and a belly full of pizza, the Turtles are ready to kick some serious shell. Kawabunga. Feel free to select your favorite turtle at the beginning of the game. Everything about them is the same, so you're not missing out on anything if you choose one over the other. Keep in mind that you can't change characters once you've made your decision. Raphael is cool but rude, so I'll go with him. You're racing to save April from a fiery inferno in Stage 1. Ironically, the true danger is the horde of foot soldiers will be facing, not the fire. Press the B button to attack with your weapon. If you get stuck in a tight spot, press A to jump away. Foot soldiers come in all different varieties. The purple ones in this level can punch and grab your turtle. Some of them will even throw ninja stars. It seems harmless at first, but being grabbed can actually kill you if your enemy holds on long enough. If you find yourself on the receiving end of an unfriendly hug, rapidly tap A and B to break free. Shredder gets an A for originality in this stage. He's recruited bowling champions and disrupted culinary students to ambush the turtles. The blue foot soldiers here love throwing knives when they're in a distance. Try knocking them out of the air with a jump kick by first jumping with A and kicking midair with B. Foot soldiers always take two hits to defeat, but there's a brief period between hits where they can counterattack. This means you'll have to adopt a stick and move tactic, or risk getting hit repeatedly between attacks. If you've played this game before, then by now you must be thinking, Agent Lozen, you're an idiot. Just talk about the special move already. Well, you're right, I've been holding out. You can perform an all-out offensive strike by pressing A and then B almost simultaneously. This attack deals a damage of two normal attacks, and kills foot soldiers instantly. There are only a few opponents that it doesn't work well against, so I recommend using the special attack whenever you can. These white foot soldiers have traded their ability to grab for an aerial sword thrust. Stay away while they're in the air, and then fight them when they're on the ground. From time to time, you'll have to fight these unicycle robots called Roadkill Rodney. Roadkill Rodney is fast and hard to catch. He'll usually counterattack with a ranged laser or an electrified lasso when you hit him. His speed makes using your special attack unreliable against him. You can either chase him around or try and corner him for an easy kill. Now these orange foot soldiers have the right idea. Frankly, I think Shredder should have bought guns for his entire army. Orange foot soldiers can fire a small distance in front of them, so it's best to not attack them straight on. Approach them from above or below and take them out with a special attack. The first boss of the game is Rocksteady. He comes equipped with a machine gun that he uses very liberally, and at close range he'll whack you with it or kick you. Using a special attack does deal more damage, but it leaves you open for a counterattack. Instead, try using a stick and move approach with normal attacks. Once you defeat Rocksteady, you could probably sell his horn in the black market to feed the turtles for a month. You should talk it over with your brothers before you leave. Foot soldiers populate virtually every stage, and you can usually use the same method of special attacking to win. You can use weapons like parking meters and fire hydrants as a fun way to kill them, but you're not rewarded points when you do. For every 200 points you score, you'll earn a free life. Extra lives go a long way in this game, so every point counts. As a kid, I used to pretend that I was taking a shower in the fire hydrant spray. Now, as an adult, I fully realize the benefit of regular good hygiene, and I recommend more than ever pretending to take a shower. Not all purple foot soldiers are created equal. These ones prefer to throw dynamite and will behave more defensively than others. The appeal of jump kicking is obvious in situations like these. With quick, rapid jump kicks, you can get in and out of battle with minimal risk to yourself. The turtles are strict followers of the 5 second rule when it comes to pizza. Eating a slice will restore your life completely. 
If you have friends, and one of them is playing with you, the person with the lowest health should eat the pizza. The boss of the alley stage is Bebop. He fights similarly to Rocksteady using a gun, charging, and punching. Avoid falling into the open manhole, and make a conscious effort to not get shot on accident. Unlike Rocksteady, Bebop can't shoot you out of the air, so jump kick your way in and out of battle when it's safe. Once you defeat Bebop, his giant warthog body would provide bacon toppings for a month. Talk it over with your brothers before you leave. You'll meet Sledgehammerfoot soldiers in the sewer. Their color might be different, but it's racist to treat them any differently from the rest of them. Look out for mousers that burrow out of the wall. They take two normal hits to destroy, but strangely, they'll also die after a single jump kick. The easiest way to deal with them is to destroy them while they're leaving the tunnel. There's little risk of taking damage this way. Beware of this falling fence. If you go into the water to avoid it, you'll be met with a bombardment of rockets. You can earn a few easy points if you knock the rockets out of the air. The evil scientist Baxter Stockman pilots an automated, rocket-propelled flying mouser assembly pod. The pod itself is harmless, and you can attack it from ground level with normal or special attacks. Baxter's only method of fighting is producing mousers. There's no limit to the number he can make, so the turtles can keep smashing them for easy points. Every new boss in the game usually has more health than the last one. Just keep swinging for an easy victory over Baxter. Salvaging his flying pod would keep Donatello busy for a month tinkering with it. Talk it over with your brothers before you leave. To put Shredder's scorn for the turtles in context, he's talked it over with his friends and plans to literally eat you if he wins. You can't afford to lose this battle. The snow stage contains a lot of new elements to contend with. Keep moving to avoid the ice chunks at the beginning. Whenever you're scrolling the screen, stay near the top to avoid the rampaging plow. The clumps of snow here indicate manhole positions that you should avoid. Finally, in this stage, you'll meet Frosty the Hitman, an icy robot armed with missiles. He moves slowly but takes several special attacks to bring down. The intergalactic bounty hunter Tora protects the weather machine that has turned New York into a winter wonderland. Treat Tora like Bebop. Stick and move with jump kicks. Tora's most notable behavior is that he frequently counterattacks by retreating and throwing ice chunks. If you try and jump kick him while he's doing this, an ice chunk could accidentally land on your head. The bosses are the hardest part of this game, but when you know the winning strategies, the game is a lot easier. Tora's exotic hide and fluffy snow boots would make an excellent gift for April. Talk it over with your brothers before you leave. The game treats these cones like the environmental weapons from Stage 2. You don't get points if you kill foot soldiers with them. These explosive barrels are the same way, but pose a danger to your turtle if they go off too close to you. It's fun to blow stuff up, but you're probably better off not messing with them at all. Two brightly colored cars side by side indicate that one of them will pull out when you're in front of it. This is a primitive example of a jump scare early in video game history, but it's effective even today. This bright yellow door is where the stage's boss will emerge from. You'll find a tempting piece of sidewalk pizza here, but save it for when you're low on health. Fly Baxter is one of the most unique fights in the game. If you blindly jump kick him, you'll end up losing a lot of health. Jump late over his first blast and let the second one go overhead. When he swoops down to attack, knock him away with a special attack. You'll get the pattern with a little practice, and you can always eat the pizza if you get hurt. Flies are linked with pestilence. If you let him live, he'll only land on someone's food and throw up digestive juices. So you should probably just back over him with a turtle van. Talk it over with your brothers before you leave. In nature, turtles aren't attracted to humans, so when April kisses Raphael, it's the same as being licked by a dog. Watch him cringe when she does. Beating Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 is about playing conservatively. Stockpile all the lives you can from the points you earn, and practice all the strategies we've talked about. Take the fight all the way to the Technodrome and beat Shredder. Tonight, the turtles dine on human soup. If you enjoyed this video, it would go a long way if you liked it and shared it with your friends. If you leave a comment below, you might even start an argument with someone, and that could be fun, right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.
Kawabunga, my friends. Kawabunga.